Today's video is Core Practical 14, which is exploring the relationship between the pressure of a gas and its volume, also known as Boyle's Law. And we should know that Boyle's Law states that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. And in fact, this comes from the equation PV is equal to NKT. And if we rearrange this equation, we get P is equal to NKT times 1 over V. So this is the relationship that we're exploring today there are several ways of doing this um, and several pieces of equipment that can do, do this for you. The easiest one is this one. What you do is you make sure that the valve is open as it is just there so that the valve itself is parallel to the airflow. You unwind this little handle here until it, the piston comes all the way out to the end and then close the valve. You wind it back in and you decrease the length of the column of air that the piston is pushing on, and you'll see a corresponding increase in pressure, and those are the readings that you take. You may, in your school, be using a different piece of apparatus, something that looks a little bit like this. And for this one, you have a foot pump attached, and you push down on the foot pump, and you see a, an increase in the pressure on the gauge here. And what you'll see is that this red liquid rises up. The length of the column that you're measuring is the length of the column of air. So you can see it starts at zero up here and goes down to here. And as you pump on the pump, that column of air is going to get less. For both pieces of equipment, we're going to use length as a measure of the volume because, of course, there's a constant cross-sectional area on this pipe here. The same with the other piece of equipment, which means that length can be used as a measure of the volume. It does mean, of course, that we won't be able to calculate any constants from this equation because we won't actually be measuring the volume. We're only measuring something that is proportional to it. What Edexcel wants you to learn from this practical art is two things. They want you to be able to write a plan. I've detailed essentially what should be in your plan above. You either decrease the volume using equipment A and measure the corresponding pressure, or you increase the pressure using the foot pump in equipment B and measure the corresponding volume or length of the column. Second thing they want you to do is do a risk assessment. Risk assessments are best done in a table like this where you detail what the hazard is. Physics experiments in general, not all the time, but in general have fewer hazards with them associated with them than say chemistry. Um, and so sometimes it feels like with risk assessments you're kind of digging around to find something that you can talk about. But we have two here. One that the apparatus could fall over. That's especially relevant for apparatus B because it's quite tall um, and it's going to fall on your foot potentially and cause injury. And so the suggested control measure for this is that you clamp the apparatus and make sure it's not near the edge of the bench. The second thing and probably the more likely thing is because you're putting the equipment under high pressure, there is a possibility that you get a burst somewhere in the equipment and you could have tubing or parts flying off the equipment and hitting you in the eyes, and therefore you have to wear safety goggles during this experiment. So what kind of data do you get from it? This data is taken from apparatus A, where you screw in the piston, measure the length of the column of air inside, and you measure the corresponding pressure. You'll notice that there are no repeats here. Um, you wouldn't do repeats for either of these apparatus for the second one, you don't do repeats because the liquid or the oil that's in the tube will tend to cling to the side of the tube. You're not going to get valid measurements. And likewise with equipment A, the likelihood is that the temperature overall will have increased from repeat one to repeat two, even though that is something that we're going to control. And so instead of doing repeat data, what we tend to take is more than the recommended six to eight uh, values for your independent variable. So you can see here that we've got more values because we want to be able to have be confident about our line of best fit. And so this was the original length of the column of air when there was no pressure being applied to it. And you can see we've got 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals, which is atmospheric pressure. And then as you decrease the length of the column inside, you can see a corresponding increase in the pressure. Plotted on a graph, it looks like this. And you'll notice that we've used arbitrary units here as the unit of length because there isn't a unit associated with the column of air on the apparatus and it isn't actually a measurement of the length. 
So it's arbitrary units, but we can see that the length is increasing and it is a scale. And the pressure is decreasing. Now this isn't very helpful as a graph in itself. We know that the equation governing this is P is equal to NKT times 1 over V. Because we know that, we know this is an inverse relationship. However, if we this was our own work and we didn't know what the equation governing the relationship was, a curve like this is not very helpful because we don't know if it's an inverse relationship, if it's an inverse square, an inverse cube, you'd have to do some processing. And this is what log graphs traditionally are for. I have done other core practicals where using log graphs, um, and I will do a, a video especially about the use of log graphs, but because we do know it's an inverse proportion here, we can go ahead and process our data. So we're processing our data to look like this, we're basically going to do one over the length to represent one over the volume, because again, that cross-sectional area is constant, so length is going to be proportional to volume. And again, we're just in arbitrary units because we don't have, we don't know that it's meters or centimeters or whatever. And therefore, one over that is going to be also in arbitrary units. And you can see these are the values, perhaps to too many significant figures. The last one could be knocked off and our corresponding pressure values. And when you plot that graph, you then get a lovely straight line as expected. What uh, Pearson have recommended that we do, or at Excel, is that we find the value of the constant. Now, we know that the straight line should pass through 0, 0, and it doesn't, in fact, pass through 0, 0. It, we have a small positive pressure here. That may be due to any systematic error that occurs in the apparatus. We don't really know. But what we do know is that this is the constant of proportionality so we know that P is equal to K times 1 over V. In this case, it would be P is equal to K times 1 over L. That's the value of that K. It isn't NKT in this situation, again, because we're not measuring the volume, we're measuring the length. Ed Excel suggests that we try and estimate the uncertainty in our proportionality constant. So we're going to go ahead and find the percentage uncertainty in length. If we look at our data, we'll see that it was given in whole numbers. So we're going to have to use half the smallest scale division. And so half of our smallest scale division would be 0 0.5. And for this, at Excel again, allow you to use a median value. The median value in our data was 15. And so we're going to go ahead and calculate the percentage for that, and it's 3.3%. And you'll notice I'm keeping it to 2SF here. The percentage uncertainty in our pressure, again, we had one decimal place in our pressure, so our half our smallest scale division is going to be 0 0.05. The median value that matches with this 15 length is 1.8 times 10 to the 5. And of course, that's times 10 to the 5 as well, times 100, and that will give us 2.8%. Now, because we found the gradient in order to get our proportionality constant, that means dividing our y value by our x value, and that means that we add their percentage uncertainty, giving us a total percentage uncertainty of 6.1%. What about minimizing the error in our experiment? Well, the first thing is uh, controlling our variables. And the thing that we have to control here, and the other thing that is going to affect the pressure or volume is the temperature. So every time you take your readings, you should pause for a moment to allow the system to come to thermal equilibrium before you read off the value of the pressure, or in the case of the second apparatus, the value of the volume. The other possibility, of course, is a parallax error. For both pieces of apparatus, so for the first one, it would be in your length reading, as you were looking where the piston is, and for the second, it would be the height of the column of liquid, so you have to make sure you are reading that at eye level so you don't have a parallax error.